My name is Peng Wang. Uh, I'm from Indiana University. And today I'm going to present our work, Game of Misdirections, Semantic Analysis of Search Autocomplete Manipulations. So first of all, let's look at what is autocomplete. So it is a functionality provided by the service providers. Here we take Google and, and, uh, and an example. Uh, before a user finish typing a query, there will be a list of suggestions show up below the search box. Uh, so in this presentation, I will call the keyword user types and trigger and the predictions and suggestions. So why am I wondering uh, how these auto commits are come from? So uh, based on uh, Google and other service providers, there are mostly two sources uh, where the things come from. One is uh, popular searches and made by different people, and the other is the content on the web. So naturally, it's very convenient for the user to search with this, uh, with the complete. And uh, also, users are always trust them as very popular one since they are recommended by Google. However, uh, the spammers also make use of this nature. And indeed, we found that this service has, this service is increasingly becomes a target for the spammers to perform uh, initiate online promotions. The spammer would manipulate the we put the suggestions and put the target on the suggestion list. So here we can see some, uh, some of the examples. So in our study, we have found this has been done systematically. And uh, the spammer, they have targeted on almost all the major search engines like Google and all the e-commerce uh, e platforms like Amazon, both on PC and mobile devices. So for example, uh, in the first picture, the, the session being triggered here is a lamp of online backup software, which turned out to be a malware. However, it is still be recommended by Google as a popular search. So one would ask, how can this manipulation happen? Uh, so based on our study, we, can, we find that this can be done by polluting the two sources where the outcome is come from. So for the first type of, of manipulation, the key strategy here is to pollute the, the search logs by using crowdsourcing. So in our study, we found this has been done systematically with the service available in public. And this here's a list of the service providers we found in our study. And they, they target on almost all the major platforms and take about one to three months to manipulate the keyword, and which will cost $2,500. And the other type of manipulation is to pollute the content of, of the web. So uh, here's, here's an example of, of the big suggestions which are generated from the content. So to understand and further mitigate this emerging threat, a direct solution is to analyze the two sources of, of the auto complete. However, only the service providers like Google can have a chance to, to analyze the search logs. And besides, a zero study on the massive, massive amount of web content is by no means trivial. And the result for the parties with no access to the search, uh, to the search logs to do a truly large scale and efficient study is full of challenging. So, so far, there's little understanding about this real world impacts of, this, uh, of these uh, promotions. So to solve these challenges, we come up with a system. So this is the first detection system without accessing to search logs. Also, we leverage several uh, NLP techniques to deal with the amount of data. And while we still achieve highly, highly efficient and accuracy and, and scalable. So based on the detection results, we did the first large scale analyze of these auto companies misjections. And we made the first uh, first step to understand the ecosystem. And our system was built upon two observations we, we found based on the band set and the good set in our study. So there are about 150 ambitious settings in the band set and about 300 
and the GDMAP steps is in the good set. So the first observation is that it's always a thematic inconsistency between the manipulated state chain and the trigger. So for example, here the trigger word is an online backup free download, and there are two state chains. One is, one is legitimate, and the other, is, the other one is manipulated. So in our system, we can find the semantic similarity between the first two pairs could be 0 0.96, but the semantic similarity between the trigger and the bit one is much more smaller. So we can find the multiplicated uh, one is less semantically similar and the trigger. Then uh, we analyze the difference of the semantic uh, sentence similarity between the band set and the good set. So and we can see from picture, indeed, these statistics tend to have a lower sentence similarity than the benign ones. So this observation can help us to distinguish the bad ones from the good ones. However, uh, this semantic information alone is not sufficient to, uh, to detect the misstations. So we have another example here. Here is also a legitimate uh, station, which is not an online backup free download. The loading here seems to be uh, seem to be relevant to the trigger, but it turned out they are related. So how can we know they are related and remove this for the party? And fortunately, we also find for the mid decisions, there is a remarkable inconsistency in the search results when compared with the triggers. So the pictures here are the search results of the trigger and the two state chains. And we can see from the picture, for the base state chain and the trigger, their search results are, are totally different. But for the legitimate one, their, their search results are, are much more similar. And we also measure the search result similarity by, uh, for the band set and good set. So we can find the base state chains tend to have a lower search result similarity than the blind ones. And this observation further helps us to identify the truly misdirections. Uh, so based on our two observations, we design our uh, detection system with these two key components. One is the search term analyzer, the other is the search result analyzer. So first, this, we start from this prediction finder. Here, this is designed to find a large number of autocomp leads. And in particular, this component will query the search engine with the autocomp API to get a large number of, of autocomp leads and start with a set of six terms. So the discovered, uh, the discovered autocomp leads will be further uh, pre-processed before sending to the search term analyzer. And the search term analyzer here looks at a set of semantic features to identify suspicious terms by using a kind file. So here we show an example of one of the features that we used, which is the sentence level similarity. And uh, this feature can be used to capture the gap between the trigger and the similarity for their, uh, for their similarity. So given two sentences, we first convert them into two fresh lists. And for each first list, they can be further break down to word list. Then we use the word vector to, to represent each word with a vector. And, and these vectors are aggregated to calculate the first similarity. And then this first similarity are again aggregated to get the sentence level similarity. And here are other features that we used in our study. Uh, so if you are interested, you can see our paper for the details. Then the suspicious autocompletes are discovered by the search term analyzer are further being queried against the search engines by the search result analyzer. And the results are, in, are infected uh, based on their content features such, like, uh, such as the size and, and the popularity of the of results and to, come to, the, to get the truly 
with suggestions. And here are the features. And due to the time limitation, I will skip this. So to understand how our system works, we evaluate it on three data sets. One is band set, one is good set, and the other one is, is a known set. So the band set was collected from the examples demonstrated by the validation service providers. And uh, the alum set is by far the most large scale one. So the evaluation shows that our system is quite efficient and, and effective. And uh, the, the scalability makes it possible for us to, to do a large scale study. And here I, will, uh, here I will describe some of the interesting findings in our study. So the lab picture shows how prevalent this problem is uh, on the search engine we studied. We found that Google is the most popular search engine that had been targeted with about 0.5% of the best suggestions uh, are polluted. And we also, we also detect about 257,000 polluted triggers, which will, I don't which will trigger about 383,000 misjustices. And when we look at the categories of these appropriate triggers, we can find that it covers a wide range of topics for our everyday searches. It's also important to understand the evolution of the misjustices. So picture on the left uh, shows how, how this emerging threat evolves over time. So in general, there is a trend that the number of misjustices keep increasing. And we further measure the, the lifetime of the misjustices, and we were surprised by the fact that they enjoy a long lifetime before they are removed. Uh, and specifically, uh, about 40% of the misjustices will stay on Google's assistant list for more than 30 days. And the average lifetime of them is 34 days, which is comparable with the legitimate ones. We also investigate the characteristics of the, of the best suggestions. So one interesting thing is multiple triggers have been utilized to promote one suggestion. So for example, here, this suggestion is related to 123 triggers. So finding one best suggestion can help us to identify other appropriate triggers and the other thing is, uh, different bit suggestions, they tend to have a uh, similar, uh, similar grammatical pattern. So take, the, take this as an example. This, this suggestion follow a trick, uh, for the pattern trigger content plus by plus and URL. And indeed, we find there are other patterns followed by, this, uh, follow, followed by the bit suggestions. So these kind of characteristics can be used by the service providers to detect more misjustices. To understand the, uh, to understand the, to understand the revenue of these service providers, we take this as an example. So this, uh, this platform can earn more than five hundred thousand dollars per week by by manipulating four hundred and sixty-five thousand uh, thousand. Suggestions. So, and last, I want to make some discussion about the work. So there are some limitations in our study. First, like any other machine learning method, our detection in theory can be embedded by making the features we used to be similar and the benign ones. However, this will increase the cost of the of the manipulation. And also, the other limitation is we are lack of the ground truth, and uh, we also have manual efforts involved in our evaluation. Um, we, we have tried our best to collect a reasonable size of the ground truth, and also the manual efforts are necessary for, for ensuring the, the, uh, the results are trustworthy. We also learned lessons from our study. We found that the manipulator, they always try to promote unpopular terms which are related to the trigger. So this is quite different from the traditional blank height SEO. So in this way, the promotion targets can evade can detection and uh, be, more uh, be more attractive to the users to search with them. And the other lesson then is 
there are some characteristics of the misjudging of the uh, and the, the, the search engine providers can use them to do to, to, de, uh, to do the detection. So in conclusion, in this work, we perform the first first large scale analysis of these other competing and these suggestions, which makes our work the first step to understand the underground ecosystem. And also we use novel NLP techniques to build up the first, the first system without access to such logs. So thank you very much for, for your attention and welcome for, for any questions. This microphone. Okay, um, please, if you have any questions for our speaker, there are two microphones, so please come up to the microphone and state your name and affiliation and ask your questions. Until then, I was curious, um, when you looked at the data, was there a relationship between the, so, um, ad pricing, so if, they, if these companies were trying to buy ads on these search terms, would were they expensive search terms, and that's why they were using this kind of black hat SEO to manipulate them? Yeah, that's one reason of that, because try to buy the ads to promote something that's very competitive, mm -hmm. but use this kind of, this kind of manipulation, uh, they can touch more users by show up before the user is typing. Awesome. Any other questions for our speaker? All right, I have one final question. So, um, so if, you were, if you were Google, how would you fix this? So if you had the access to the query logs and those mm -hmm. types of things, um, how would you go about addressing this situation? So for the parties with access to the search logs, they are, I, I mean, they have more information about uh, how people search these uh, search this keywords. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, where the search are come from and, and which IP, and uh, whether whether this IP has query a lot of uh, other uh, query a lot of other keywords. So based on this kind of features, they can do some kind of detection. Awesome. I guess then the follow-up question then for somebody at Google is why aren't they doing that, right? Yeah. Great. Cool. Well, let's uh, thank our speaker. Thank you.